we have made it to episode 10. I did not think we could. I mean, I figured these guys would, <laughs> but I thought I'd be out of here by then. <laughs> Derek Sharp, Kaylee Cottrell, and BJ Daniels as we sum up a win that brings the Bulls to 500. We'll talk to Alex Golish. We'll also talk to Tramel Logan, special guest from volleyball, Leandro Vesoto, part of this show, and kick back and get ready for a fun hour. Uh, it was fun. It was fun being back at home, yeah. even though, and I'm not going to say it to his face, obviously, but Coach Golish, as they got off the bus before the game, everybody was sweating like they had just played the game. It was, <laughs> it was hot, but uh, it, was worth, it was worthwhile in a win against Temple, BJ. Mm. Absolutely. Um, you know, very thankful we got the win. Uh, we're one step closer to what everyone is whispering about, you mm -hmm. know, behind the scenes, which mm -hmm. is a bowl game. Yeah. Uh, you know, but it, it, it was hot down there. I'm, I'm glad we started out fast. That was one thing we really discussed and talked about. And uh, I can see that throughout preparation throughout the week, that's something that they actually harped on, and yeah. it actually happened. Uh, did you guys, we talked last week about uh, Pete Carroll, and uh, of course we talked with Coach Golish about how to overcome those slow starts. Did yeah. you guys ever talk in practice about the middle of the games? Because that's the next step. I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, it was a fantastic game, and Byron Brown gets on the weekly honor roll for his work as well. Sean Atkins, 169 yards receiving on nine catches. The nine put him over Rodney Adams for most catches in a single season in Bulls wow. history. Yeah. So we'll get to the defense first, but... The offense, especially in the first quarter, was fun to watch yeah. down there on field level, I'm sure. I mean, Kayla. I even talked to Sean after the game, and he's such a humble guy. He was just like, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. You know what happened? We won, and that's mm -hmm. all that mattered. And he gave kudos to his teammates, and I talked to Amaris, too, with his two interceptions. And he did the same thing, give a yeah. shout-out to his D-line, and really selfless guys out there, but really cool to see them do their thing like that. That's the way that Sean rolls, for sure, and again, yeah. much of the team. So you mentioned Amaris' uh, two interceptions. Yeah. Uh, from where I sit for the radio side, we're up high above at he Raymond James Stadium, flew. but down there on the field, it must have been flew. incredible. It was, it was absolutely insane. The impact, mm -hmm. the height, the, the full extension, the stretch of that, just so athletic, so it, mind blowing. We have Sam Barrington, who's a buddy of yours and all of ours, and he's on a radio broadcast, and he said, you know, he's played in the NFL, and those catches, see if you agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, receiver, uh, defensive player, whatever position, any level, college or pro, Put them together. That's as two as impressive a catch as you're going to see by one guy in one game. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's very hard to high point the football, uh, especially with all the distractions and things going on, and someone contesting. I'm sure the receiver didn't want Amaris to catch the ball, so <laughs> uh, you can see the the receiver draped all over Amaris Brown. But uh, for him to go up and just catch it purely with hands, that's something that on the next level. That's what scouts look for. That's mm -hmm. what NFL coaches look for as far as their process, as far as trying to figure out who they're going to draft next year. So. Uh, that was really impressive by him. So A.B. got that, and then Shmel Logan had the pick six defensive line position. We are going to speak to him on this show today. You're also going to hear from Leandro Vesoto from volleyball. He's going to be about two <laughs> feet taller than any of us right now, seven-footer, who's an assistant on that team that is playing for a division title this week as well. He's got a great story. And speaking of great stories, Kayla, you always provide us with one. So what's on the, the list yeah, today as far as your feature goes? Yeah, did a feature on Salute to Service this past okay. weekend. And I think we had about 350 cadets take the field. So I talked to a couple wow. cadets before they before they got out on the field. I talked to a couple veterans oh, wow. uh, that were out at the tailgates out there. And what a special day. I, I um, Previous in the week, I talked to Dom Ganella. His dad was Green Beret <laughs> for our military. Wow. He grew up around McDill Air Force Base. Um, a couple, a couple military family ties. Talked to Byram's mom and dad mm -hmm. uh, their at their tailgate. So his Byram's dad's dad and grandpa was in the military, and Byram's mom's two brothers are in the Air Force. So wow. talked to both of them. Byram had his full support system out there as usual. I actually met his track coach. Okay. He flew well, Mr. in. Javelin. And, yes, we talked about the javelin <laughs> actually, and, <laughs> and and actually that he was a distance runner. Um, as well. So, yeah. I mean, javelin with the arm and distance running with the endurance, you know, it really just helped shape Byram to, to who he is today. So it was really cool to see from, you know, his younger days that support carry through and, and still have that strong connection. Wow, really like, special. Hearing all that, I kind of want to shut up and just hit fast forward. But there's, there's <laughs> a lot of stuff to get to before then. We are going to have the head coach, Alex Golish. And if you're wondering, yes, I did have a lot of coffee before the show, but you guys are saying it's not Honestly, the worst didn't even coffee notice. stain. Did okay. not notice. Gonna... No, that's not noticeable. No. But of course, <laughs> well, you're wearing white too. You usually go dark, and today it had to be the white, didn't it? Of course, it had to be. <laughs> and of course, everything, you know, I guess people don't look at me anyway because we're sitting next to PJ Daniels. That's and true. his resplendent nature. We do have a lot of trails. Trail. So oh, I know, stop, I know. Stop. I know, stop. <laughs> I'm just going to drink coffee the whole show next time, and no one will care. Uh, so, cinematic recap time. 
as highlights coming your way from the victory. And then we'll sit down with the head coach and much more coming your way on Bullseye. Coach, last week in this space, intentionally, almost to ad nauseum, I harped on the slow starts just so, as we said on the radio, you guys would jump ahead 21 nothing. actually almost happened. Uh, obviously, whatever you did in the process was right when it came to that. Yeah, I think our guys were, were juiced up and ready. You know, I, I think that's, that seems like you shouldn't have to do that. Like, you're, you're playing college football in a, um, in a really cool environment, but we're still growing. We're still figuring out who we are, what, what it actually takes to get to that point. And I said, but when I say we, as a program, we're still figuring that out. And, um, and I think our guys were certainly ready. Um, and just like I said after the game, the, now the frustrating part is how do, you how do you keep your foot on the gas? How do you get to a point as a program where you can go end a team? Mm. And uh, I think in this league where, where the talent gap is is really minimal amongst the entire landscape of the, of the league you you've got to be able to use the momentum to go finish teams off and and i said it really resembled a lot of what week one looked like where we jumped out and i think we were almost surprised a little bit and that's the maturity of our team that's the confidence of our team that's where we got to continue to grow is just play each play independent of itself play each drive independent of itself and um and be able to go finish a team, but I, but really proud of, of one the defense stepping up the way they did in in those two and a half quarters where I felt like offensively we couldn't get anything. I don't want to say going because we were able to drive the ball up and down the field where we just couldn't finish drives. I thought the defense kept responding. The four turnovers, I mean, in every imaginable way, are the difference in the game. Uh, you mentioned the defense, and obviously the turnovers stand out. We'll get to that in a little bit, especially given the jugs gun some love. But uh, I thought twice at 17-10 getting stops in that second quarter to set up the end of the first half and sort of give you a little bit of a boost. So it wasn't just the turnovers, right? Yeah, you, you get that stop at the end of the second quarter and are able to go and, and create three points out of it. Ends up being a four-point game. Ends up being really in every imaginable way the difference in the game. 
allows you to play the fourth quarter the way we were able to play the fourth quarter. But it's um, it, it was absolutely huge. And I, I think a really big confidence boost for the defense, I think a big confidence boost for us as a team, it allows you to punt the ball a little bit more where where I know I, I've gotten a reputation for, for gambling a little bit on fourth down. But there's times where you felt like you've had to and uh, to be able to, to stay on the field and keep keep going. But it certainly allows you to play complimentary football in a game like that where you feel like you can punt the football and you're playing really good defense. And on top of playing really good defense, you're creating turnovers. Absolutely huge. Yeah. Uh, Tremel Logan, uh, Daquan Evans, I kind of go in games now expecting them to do something. Another player now that I'm starting to have expectations of is Mac Harris. I'm seeing him now, second week in a row, creating something, doing something on defense, recovering a fumble. Uh, can you talk? I know he's had injuries and things like that, but can you talk about like his maturity and how he's kind of growing into a role where even I look at him now, I'm like, okay, well, what are you going to do this week? Yeah. Mac is, is really a cool story because he's a young man that early in the season was a special teams guy for us but continue to just stay the course. Mac possesses a ton of leadership qualities. You could tell he was a quarterback in high school. Mm -hmm. You could tell he's really confident in the game. He understands the game. He studies the game. Really intelligent yeah. and brings confidence, I think, to the defense because right in the middle of your defense, you've got a guy that can get everybody lined up, that mm -hmm. doesn't, doesn't lose composure. There's no panic with Mac. Um, and a young man that, you know, as a coach, you always talk about, man, like when your opportunity is presented, you got to take it. Your opportunity is right. presented, you got to take it. And he's taken his opportunity at a time where we needed something there to spark us a little bit. And um, he has certainly done that. I think a really calming influence, I think a really calming influence for Coach Orlando and that staff because you, you kind of know what you're going to get out of Mac. And I think there's right. still so much in the tank for Mac. Just had a conversation today at practice, like, man, you got to continue to change your body and continue to buy into doing everything the right way in terms of yeah. how you're living life off the field. And, and I don't mean that in a big negative way. I mean, like, how, how you prepare yourself for a game, what your off season looks like, mm -hmm. because he's a big kid that can, that can certainly continue to change his body and yep. can take another step as a player. Absolutely. Guy that's got charisma and you could just tell was waiting to, to, to break out and it's great to see him actually pull it off. Now we do have to get to the jug scum because you talk about it after the game as emblematic of the process, namely the Tramel Logan pick six where it's not a typical play. Maris Brown with a couple of nice catches as, as well. So first of all, the extra practice that's not required, but it seems like everyone has embraced. And secondly, we're here in the IPF. Could you sort of point out exactly where, where those things are? Because it seems like you have more than one. Yeah, we've, we've, that was one thing right in the back there where we bought a handful of them when we got here. And um, there's monster tennis ball machines over there as well. Uh, like you said, I think symbolic maybe of, of what you're trying to grow into. Um, you know, and I tell the guys every week, when the extra work becomes normal work, mm -hmm. it becomes a part of your process. Mm -hmm. And um, and Tramel's just one of the examples. It could have happened to a bunch of different guys. I think certainly a testament to the defensive line, like KP, Coach KP buying into, um, man, like AG says, we're catching jugs, we're catching jugs. And I think it was just really cool to walk over the bench to the, to the D line and there's Tramel with this big old smile. <laughs> and he, he says, <laughs> Look, look at the film. I was on them jugs. I was on them jugs. <laughs> and um, like just so proud of himself. I, I think there's been so many, um, so many times throughout the season that there have been like these light bulb moments uh, across the board everywhere where guys have said, man, like, like you keep talking about this and here we are seeing a result because of it. And I think young people in general, like you, you can say whatever you want until they see evidence of it. They're, they're never going to truly buy into it. Um, but they continue to see evidence of work paying off. Balls not just bouncing your way. Like you make balls bounce right. your way. Uh, and there's a bunch of coaching, coach talk things that you can say. But, but at the end of the day, you said it. It's, a, it's symbolic of what the process is. It's symbolic of, of where we're going, how we're growing. And, and Tramel is such an incredible example of that because Tramel will be the first to tell you when we got here, he didn't have it all figured out. He was trying to figure out who he wanted to be, not just as a player, but as a man and what direction he really wanted to go. And this is a guy that's transformed his body, continues to learn what it takes to really be an elite high level defensive lineman. 
Uh, but he's become a leader for us. He exudes confidence in, in the way he acts, in the way he plays, in the way he carries himself. He's Jamal's going to be incredibly successful in life, but the growth from him that we've all seen in the last year is why you coach, is, is why you get into this, to see young men like him overcome everything he's overcome and now have playing his best football of his yeah. life as as a senior that's got another year left in him. So hopefully he does. Yeah. And Sean Atkins is another person. I mean, walk on and now he sets the single season record for receptions. I mean, you talk about growth and expansion. Like, what do you see from Sean from a day-to-day -day perspective as far as what has made him into the player he is today? Yeah, elite process, which is for him bred confidence. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's the same guy every day. He, he works as hard as anybody. Um, you know, had a shoulder injury in the spring, came back a month earlier than he was supposed to, didn't get hit at all in camp, wore a red jersey all of camp, um, and then just continue to work on his craft, work on his craft, work on his craft. He's a young man that we challenge to gain weight. He's a young man that we challenge to change his habits in terms of how he sleeps and, and how long he sleeps and what he puts in his body from a supplement standpoint. And he slowly but surely has bought into that mm. and now he's seeing these results. And But the results are because of the work he's put in, right. the way he's, he's continued to change his body. He's put weight on during the season, which is really rare for a receiver that's mm. running 6,000 miles or yeah. 6,000 yards, 6,000 miles, 6,000 <laughs> yards a day. Feels yeah. like um, just can, and he's gotten faster. He's gotten more confident. Like, man, everything you want in, in your program. Talk about Tremel, talk about Sean. There's other guys too, but it takes time. If we can get 120 dudes oh, yeah. that are all elite at their process like that, it's called championship football. Absolutely. Uh, the last catch was a big one because it basically set you up for the next conversion. And I, I feel like I know the answer is yes, absolutely. But had you been short on third and one, would you have gone for it on fourth down, down 27-23? Up 27-23. Yeah, you know, that was a conversation. Literally, we're, we were standing there. T.O. and I were standing there talking. You know, Joel in the headset to, man, like, it was third and long. Like, what, what do you want to do here? You you. I, that, in my mind, it was the play was set up to get you to fourth and three, mm -hmm. fourth and four. What do you do? Um, the the missed extra point by Temple was huge because a field goal there puts you at seven, and at least makes it a touchdown game where you got to believe that they would go for two to try to end the game. Mm -hmm. But I think <clears throat> again, Byron, the O line, Sean, on a scramble drill, so symbolic of what what we are right now, which is trying to make one more play than them and and those two guys they just did it at practice for two hours like sure that that's that's what it is and they certainly make it easy for you to do it you're gonna have to as we start to wrap it up with coach now gonna have to make a lot of plays i would imagine on friday night against a team that hasn't lost in conference yet and we talked all last week about early start saturday this is kind of the opposite you probably have to change a little bit of your pre-prep but that first and then secondly the opponent utsa yeah, certainly uh, playing on a Friday, uh, you're, you're a day short in your prep, so we moved up our week a little bit, and, and we've had this schedule set since July when we sat down, and that was the nice thing about a Friday night ESPN game is you get that early in, in the summer so you know and you're able to prepare and, and have a plan. But I think a challenge for us, anytime you change anything for young guys, it's, it, it presents a challenge, meaning they've got to change their process. Right. Um, we got to change our process as coaches, but I've tried to do as much as I can keeping it consistent. The fact that you're on the road and then that it's such a late game changes it a little bit as well. But all of those are, are really cool um, learning moments, learning what our process looks like, and then you get to go play what I think at least so far on film has looked like the best team in our conference. It's the next step for us in terms of as a test to where we are. Can we go play four quarters of football at our best? If we can, you, we've shown that we'll play with the best teams in the country. Um, and if we can't, we've shown that we, we can play with very mediocre teams and not have the success we want. So if we can play offense, defense teams really smart, really hard for four quarters and execute at a high clip, you'll come out on the positive side of it. But for us at this point in our program, this is the next test. We get a chance to go play on national TV in front of all of our peers who are all sitting in their hotel That's rooms true. watching, um, watching both 
our peers and the our players, everybody Friday night, what are they doing, BJ? Sitting in their hotel room watching Absolutely. football. Absolutely. And so it's a it's a huge <clears throat> measuring stick for us. And we'll see where we are at the end of it. I think it'll be really fascinating to watch it Friday night. And hopefully when you get home at whatever time, 5, 6 a.m. on Saturday, it'll be all smiles and victory. And thanks a lot for uh, the win last week and best of luck this week. Thank you. All right. Bulls, if they win, we'll wrap up that bowl eligibility thing. And don't forget the game after that, the season finale is at home. The regular season finale is at home on a night time against Charlotte. Coming up next, special feature you guys want to see, and then that man we were talking about, Jamel Logan. Today, USF is proudly saluting our active and retired military personnel and thanking them for their service. I'm Kaylee Cotelli, Bulls Insider. As an Army veteran, what does a day like today mean to you? Oh, it means everything for those who have served and those who are serving currently and even those who are about to serve. It represents what we sacrifice for the country, and not only us, but our families as well. Just having the gratitude and the thanks that we get uh, as veterans and seeing the university, uh, getting the veterans back together and uh, see our football team and root on our team for our alma mater, is, uh, it, it means a lot. Today, I know our Detachment 158A and our Joint uh, Leadership Detachments are, are all around USF for coming in today and taking on the field. We feel very, very much excited. You are no stranger to what it means to be elite on and off the field. Your father taught you from a young age what elite looks like as he was a Green Beret for our military. What did his impact have on you? Sure, I'd say pretty much everything that has to do with me preparing for like any game or practice, you know, my mentality going into practice and how I go about my like my process and stuff. I feel like I learned a ton of that from my dad. And just how I work, like the discipline aspect of things. Seeing the like the flag on the helmet and stuff. That's super cool. I'm not gonna lie, I've been looking forward to this game like all season. As a cadet, what will it be like for you to take the field here today? It'll be really awesome to take the field. I really do appreciate the University of South Florida, Raymond James Stadium for getting us out here today. I'm really proud of the team um, from all branches coming out here today to show support. What's it like for you to watch these young cadets take the field? It's inspiring. It makes me want to go back and join again, you know what I mean? Because it is something that helps you to bring on it to your family and to your name. As a Marine Corps veteran, I, it reminds me of going to Paris Island and stepping on the yellow footprints. They'll go ahead and become something bigger than themselves. Seeing them uh, get into service and uh, serve back to our country, that's what it's all about. So seeing that happen in real time is awesome. Seats for Service is an awesome program. It allows veterans and their families that may not be able to come to the game normally actually find a seat here and it brings that camaraderie between veterans together. You have two brothers who are part of the Air Force. To have a game like this where you can watch your son on the field doing his thing as we show our appreciation for our military, what does that mean to you? It means a lot, you know, I think I always appreciate the men and women that have served. It just means a lot to celebrate Veterans Day and for them to come out and for my son to play at a stage on a stage such as this. It means a lot. I mean, my dad's a veteran and my grandfather's a veteran. So to see showing respect for the for what the service that they perform is, is, is huge. What's really cool is his first touchdown pass was last year on the Veterans Appreciation Game. I'm very proud of him. What does it mean to you to have USF show some appreciation to our military? Oh man, it, it means everything because you, you know we come we come from a from a history of, of veterans and, and patriotism and, and this foundation of this country was built upon that and just for USF and the community of Tampa Bay to support us means a whole lot. And this is just kind of like one of those events that really gets to showcase like what the American spirit's about and I love it so it's great to be out here. We are pleased to be joined by Jamel Logan, a.k.a. Mr. Jugsgun, Booker T. Washington, guy that has been getting a lot of love, and rightfully so, uh, in the last couple of days. But also, it's his fourth year, so he didn't just come up on the scene and make that big play. Uh, Jamel, although I'm sure you've been uh, enjoying not mm -hmm. just your individual moment, but the victory, how good was it to really kind of had a, a, have a defensive-led victory the other day? Um, it felt good, you know, um, especially when defense always, like, you know, win games. Because, you know, they like to say uh, defense wins championships. So, like, you know, just going out there winning, getting a dub with the guys, man, it felt good. And being able to do it at home, did you forget where your locker room was? I mean, that, that had been a long time, right? <laughs> nah. 
you know, doing it home is always doing home in front of our fans, you know, um, going out there, giving them, putting on a good game for them and like giving them, you know, enjoying the time out there. And especially coming away with a dub is bittersweet. The thing that people remember what happened last year, not going to relive it, but mm -hmm. to turn it around like you did mm -hmm. from that game against Temple. What did you guys do differently? What was kind of like the focus? Because you, you pulled it off, whatever it was. Um, like it was last year's season was much different from this year, you know, with the staff and how we did things and how we went about things. But um, I can't say we attacked it this year, like, you know, like mm. get back from how last year came, um, um, turned out. So it was like we had that in our minds going into the week and um, we didn't want it to have the same outcome like last year. So we did. Well done. Mm. Your pick six, what goes through your head during a play like that? <laughs> <laughs> um, when I did catch it, I was like, oh, like the end zone really right there. And, uh, <laughs> and the first thing that came to my mind was the flip in it, but uh, I knew that was going to cost us uh, a flag or whatever, so I didn't. But I told myself next time I score, I'm going to flip in it. So it. it's a good thing when you've got such a clear path to the end zone that you could yeah. think about your celebration. Was yeah. anyone, I'm curious, because I'm, I'm way up there in the press box. I don't know, was anyone saying anything to you? Like, just get in. I mean, how does, that, nah. how does it sound on the field? Uh, or you black out when it comes to that? No, nah, on the field, like, I really don't hear nothing but my thoughts. Like, hmm. I'm running, because it's like, it reminded me, like, from the um, Fumble Navy game. Like, oh, yeah. it was just, like, just me running with clear space. And it was just, like, you know, a whole bunch of thoughts on how I want to celebrate going on. So. A fumble in the Navy yeah. game. So you uh, show what you can do when you have the ball. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to your high school days. Did yeah. you have how many defensive touchdowns did you have? Do you remember roughly? Yeah, I had one my senior year at pick six as well. All right. Yeah. And uh, did you have Jugs guns at Booker T? <laughs> All right. Tell people about that, that nah. because it was something that Coach Golish mentioned as part of a big part of the process. The process meaning the extra work you do, what you do during the week. Mm -hmm. And so I see this a lot. I turn around and I see people catching extra passes. You don't yeah. have to. So. Uh, is that kind of part of the culture right now? Yeah, um, I, I could personally speak for me that um, since I've been here, I always did like some extra after practice, like whatever it is, is extra gases, me working on my technique and um, knowing how I dropped passes before, like, hmm. and uh, this was my first year, like really getting on the jugs for real and me seeing the difference. It was like, okay, like I constantly got back on it. So it was like, that was like, you know, when you see your progress, like, it make you want to do it even more because, like, you see the growth. So it was like, yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah. Well, Coach Golish talks about the process that mm -hmm. you all have. How would you describe your process? Um. So begin my process from now and the beginning of the season. It was very much different. Like you, um, like you say, like you know, when we not having a success, we um, having like you think about what you did, how your process was throughout the week, and you just pour more into it, like only way it's for it. So it's like, um, you know, I think about how my process was throughout the week and how it um, translated to the game. And then I just think about what can I do more to improve and be on point more in the game and make the plays I need to make. What's it been like? I mean, you know, not a lot of wins the last three years. Your first three, three mm -hmm. years of the team now, five and five. And I, I'm sure you guys don't sit in huddles going, hey, bowl game, bowl game. But to be able to have that in as a thought process, this mm -hmm. has got to be pretty special. Yeah, it feel it feel very special. Like, um, like finally, like tasting, like you know, the winning. Like it feel good. Like and knowing that we're one win away from going bowling, and I've never been bowling since I've been in college. Mm -hmm. So it's like. I definitely want that experience. So it's like, you know, we working for it and we itching for it. Nice. You guys are building something so special. What's it like working with the coaches on your side of the ball? Mm, it's awesome, you know, like, they bring out the best of you like each and every day. And like, you know, um, they was what I need, they what I needed this year, you know, um, with the staff and um, how I was going about this season. Like, you know, God placed them in my life at um, the right time and for things to be going how it is, like, I'm grateful for them. We talked to Jonathan last week about, you know, Kevin Patrick, so I got to ask you about him as well, mm -hmm. and it seems like he likes the fact that he's always energy, high energy, high energy. Yeah. You, you alluded to the staff, but what's it been like with him particularly? Um, it's been awesome with KP. I've been able to learn a lot from him, you know, especially the energy-wise, like, you know, <laughs> having us juiced up, like, you know, um, making, making sure, like, you know, us, our D-line group, we bring the intensity and energy every day in practice, and it's like, you know, I like that, having that. Um, from the coach perspective, you feel me, not just the players. Sure. So it's like, you know, it make everything much more fun and much more like, you know. 
Is there anybody on that defensive side of the ball that you actually have to say, could you just tone the energy down a little bit? <laughs> uh, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. yeah, but I let him, like, you know, I don't really like to, like, knock guys, but, like, sometimes you're like, come on, come on. You feel me? Let me get him on, you feel me? Take a minute. Yeah. Take a minute to relax. So yeah. you were number 13, right? Did, yeah. uh, did you want number five and Greer ended up leaving? Yeah, so you got it, or did you just go, you know, 13 might be unlucky? No, nah, I always used to tell him, like, boy, as soon as you go on, that fire coming right to me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I'm on it. Like, yeah. I got to ask, did he communicate with you? Because the last pick six was number five, Antonio <laughs> Greer. Did you know that? No, nah, like, I, it, um, so, um, <laughs> When he was here, I asked him, like, you know, like, you know, about five, this and that. And his IG name was Big Play Five, so, like, me watching him make the big plays and stuff like that is like, okay, you repping it right. Like, I, I, got, I ain't got no choice but to wait on it, you know? So it was like, yeah. <laughs> Do you have an IG? Yeah. Are you on it much? Yeah, not really, but I'm on it, though. If people want to hit you up, can they? Or do you just like, you know, yeah, they not can. very active? All right, what is yeah, it? Yeah, I don't really get the notifications like that for okay. it, but, like, <laughs> when I get on there, I'll probably will see it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, what's uh, what's the, the mood like now? I mean, you got a tough opponent this week. Tell people what you're what you're thinking. Yeah, um, I really like how I'm thinking is like I really want to go out here and dominate this week. You know, definitely going to their um, to their stadium and like I hope they got their fans there so they could be disappointed. Like, <laughs> like I love like going into another like you know um, school atmosphere and just shutting it all down. So it's like <laughs> it's gonna be fun. This Sounds good, man. Uh, so if you're watching Roadrunner fans, you heard it first. Get ready to be disappointed. Hey, <laughs> you don't have to do another pick six. Just make some people disappointed. Right? I got you. I got you. <laughs> no, Logan. We've got a special guest coming up next. Stay tuned to Bullseye. And we are back on Bullseye. One of the teams that has been getting my attention and continues to hold it is Volleyball. And they are in first place in the American East Division. And they can wrap it up first place if they perform well this weekend. And a new member of the staff is sitting with me now, and we really thank you for taking your time, Leandro Vesoto. And if you guys are wondering, by looking at him, did he play? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he played a little bit. Before we get into South Florida, and obviously we'll talk a lot about the Bulls, tell people your playing experience, which only recently ended. Yeah, it was a long journey. Uh, I played 28 years. Wow. Yeah, professional, I played 23. I started super early, 17 years old. I Hold on, you said you started professional at 17. 17. Oh my goodness. 17. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I started to have that pressure to, to perform at the highest level really mm. in a young age. And I spent 15 years with the Brazilian national team. I played 10 years uh, overseas. I played in Japan, I played in Italy six years. I played in Qatar, Korea, uh, Russia. <laughs> So I played the Olympics 2012, where we got the, the silver medal. Uh, I, mean, I am four-time world champion. Oh, that's good, too. <laughs> I, would, I would have led with that. You know, it's funny. You could probably leave out one country of experience and still be impressive to me. <laughs> so let's start with the Brazilian national team part. Obviously, you're from Brazil. Um, volleyball is, is king there. Uh, what was yeah. it like growing up and just sort of getting right into that sport? And I imagine your height pushed you into that sport. Yeah, absolutely. My my first uh, experience with volleyball, my sisters, they play volleyball because volleyball in Brazil is the second sport. Hmm. Science, so football, yeah. soccer, first one. And after, so usually when you start to be too tall to play soccer, it was my case, I'm seven foot. So I was 12, I was really bad with my feet. I tried, <laughs> I love soccer, but I was terrible. I was always the last one to be chosen when we played oh. with the with the fans. <laughs> you so you were the last one to be chosen. I was, uh, the last one, and um, let me try something different. Uh, but I didn't imagine volleyball. And my sisters they played because Brazil won the gold medal in '90, so every everyone started to focus more on volleyball. Yeah. And they tried. They went to the tryout, and the the coach saw me close to my mom. Say, how old are these kids? I was like 11 years old. How tall is he? He's 5'11". <laughs> <laughs> no, you're gonna play volleyball. I say, oh, okay, that's how I started the journey. But you know, people uh, just watch the Olympics and marvel at them, and as I do, you know, since I can remember. Um, and for somebody that's used to playing it from an early age, being pro at an early age, still I can only imagine that playing in the Olympics is incredible. Does it feel at all like a normal volleyball match, or do you just feel this different level? 
everything is so special because you're in the Olympic Village, uh, people all over the world for all different backgrounds, sports, and in the same time, it's very special to be there, but have also that feeling that you're not special. Everyone's there for the same goal, mm. fight hard to get the top of the, the, the game. Yeah. And it's amazing how many people put effort in, in put 100% of their life to reach that goal. Right. And it's amazing energy, everyone know, really focus, uh, everyone putting all they have. And it was amazing to have that experience. To be honest, as uh, Brazil, it's a lot of pressure. When we played the Olympics, everyone expected to be in the final. Everyone's, uh, that moment, Brazil, we, we won the world champion in 2010. So we went to the Olympics as a favorite team to be the champion. Mm -hmm. And people say, did you enjoy it? Um, I enjoy it now, but that moment was a lot of pressure. So uh, I should put all of my energy, all of my mindset was to be a, a champion. And she won that gold medal. And so this is, it's hard to say that you can enjoy it when you in the fight moment that we, we are. So yeah, it was, 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 now it was, was fun, but that moment was a lot of pressure. Now you can look at it and say a silver medal is okay. I'm guessing you didn't like hide your silver, silver medal in the basement. You still have it, right? Yeah, I okay. have it in my office yeah. here. Okay, good. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, I have it here in my office. Uh, people ask me about the, the silver medal. You, you were happy? With the silver medal, I say, hey, I'm, I'm have a really winning mentality. Mm. So, I I'm not satisfied with the the silver because I know that we could get that gold medal. We have a real chance. We was two zero over. We have the match point. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't I guess know that. Russia, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a Russia the final and have a this turnover. We lost. We felt a lot of physical. And later, the players of Russia, they, they was catching with the doping the, a year later. So a lot of things going on. So we, we don't know. No. So we f if I have this feeling that we could have that gold. It's, I, I say that's like when you lose someone that you love, uh, you missed it, but you get used to. So mm. I got used to with that defeat. If I, I can't say to you that, I'm 100% satisfied, wow. but I get used to and I appreciate because if you see how many people in the world they have a, a Olympic medal, it's, it's just a few ones. So I, I see a huge value on that. I have to ask you, what year was that? Because your, your memory of it was really fresh. What year was that? 2012. Okay, so it's London. been a while and you still remember just like yeah, that. Wow. Yeah. Well, let's go to a team that is uh, playing those pressure moments and is winning a lot of them and is right now in the gold position at first place, your USF volleyball team. It's been so fantastic to watch your first year with the team. Before we get into how they're performing, you know, you just finished playing. You could have done anything. I know you wanted to coach, but mm -hmm. what got you here? There's yeah. no Brazilians other than Maria Andrade on the team. Yeah. It was amazing because uh, I trust a lot of God and I think in the God plan to was shaping my life all these years. And we're planning to move to the United States. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I moved to, to Fort Lauderdale at that moment because I have a, I have a family there. Okay. And I was preparing myself in the end of my career to coaching. And I was really close with the really good Brazilian team. We were a really great coach. He's an Italian guy. Uh, he was mentoring me, helped me to dive in this coaching world, but with the, the women's because I oh. spent all of my life playing men's, men's volleyball. Uh -huh. And one really interesting thing that he told me that now the women's game is more close to the men's game than ever. Hmm. So if you see the high level, international level, they play like the men's game now. You know, very aggressive with the serve, with hitting, a lot of physical game. And I was thinking how I can bring that for a collegiate level. You know, how I can help them to be better in this environment, different environment that they came from. But first, the mentality is the same. And I remember the first day that I that I, yeah. I meet the girls, and I look to them and say, hey, I look you guys as a professional players. I don't look like your collegiate players. Okay. Everyone always looked staring at me like, oh, this guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they would say, hey, I, I'm not going to treat you like students, athletes. I, I feel I see you like as a professionals. And I teach you, and I, I want to practice like like that. So I think this has helped a lot to build this, this confidence. They, they feel that, that I, I'm here to help them, to make them better. 
and, and they yeah, I feel so happy, really happy to 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 help them develop because it's not just about the game, just mm -hmm. about winning games, sure. but it's about develop people, prepare people for the life because right. the sports teach you a lot uh, and make you shape you a lot how you're gonna face your life later. Okay, as a professional, I took so long to face their real life, huh. but this is preparing me a lot for this this transition. And I was playing until 30 April was my last game, and it was super fast. And I say, okay, now I'm retired. I can fish in the morning. Oh I can rest a little bit. Wait, well, you said 30 April, so no, you did not get any rest. <laughs> yeah, no. I did not. But I'm I'm happy because you know many 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 professional players struggle after they retire to find the, hmm. the the right path why they want to be happy and i feel so happy what i'm doing now coaching help these kids well it's amazing because you talk about all the moments you've had as a professional and playing for brazil and so many memories i'm sure and the intensity level in those matches speaks for itself so you probably were a little uncertain how that would translate to college would you have that drama would you have those type of moments Oh, we've had them this year, and the Bulls have come out on top. What has that experience been like, particularly uh, the winning record and everything, but winning a lot of tight matches and coming through? It's been, I'm sure, not the yeah. same experience, but bringing back those memories for you. Oh, absolutely. I I'm, I'm feel so happy. I'm, I want to jump inside the court sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that. I I've feel seen like, that. no, this fire, <laughs> and uh, I think they feel that too. Good. You know, they feel that I'm there for them. I'm there to help them to, to, to make the best. And I feel a lot of joy. I feel a lot of frustration when we lose, when we lose games that you know, we didn't make fight the right way. We didn't face the game the, the right, with the right approach, or maybe we didn't prepare during mm -hmm. the week because, you know, they have a, like tasks, they have to study, they are students, they have a lot of things going on out of the volleyball. So uh, I still believe that with all of that, if the, you put the right effort, the right mentality, a lot of things come, can, good can come out. It's, for sure, it's not a 100% that you're going to win the game, but you have a really bigger chance to have a good game, a good weekend if you prepare yourself, if you give 100% during the practice, if you have the right mindset and you go for aggressive. I think that's the embrace it, this aggressiveness, they are now they, they fighting with the, the serve, with the attacking, and this is something that really makes me happy because I think it's a big role that I have. I'm still learning sure. a lot of things because that's transition for, for coaching, but they, uh, I know people, you know, that's, that's make me happy is see people and talk to them, talk, try to help them to be a better people. That's, that's the big goal. Well, you can just see it. I got to ask you one question. I'm curious because Jolene Shepherdson, head coach, Visoto and Coco Chris Guerra, uh, you're all out there. You're being very active. Do you have a specific role during the actual matches? It seems like maybe you're calling some of the serves or receive. Uh, what are the different roles? Because we just know you as coaches. Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot because <laughs> <laughs> I'm charged with the the volumetrics is the the tool that you use for for stats. Okay. When we we watch the other teams, we uh, we can watch our, all the teams in the country, even overseas. So that where you bring out all the the stats, the numbers, and we use this to prepare for the games, to make the game plan, mm -hmm. to evaluate how we are doing during the season, where is the our weakest point sure. where is the strongest point and we transfer that for the practice what we're going to work to to improve the the team what we're going to work to stop the other team so where we're going to serve where the spot we serve how they play after serve there so <laughs> it's all planned out yeah it's a lot of information sometimes people see me just showing where to the right spot to serve but hmm. Everything uh, happened because of that. You know, I mean, uh, depends of the, the the position that we serve, the play that we serve. That the setter have some kind of distribution, sure. and we can overload our block, or we can prepare a defense early to 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 dig that ball. Uh, or maybe they are really weak in that zone, so they have a really bad pass, so they have to play the high ball, so make right. it easier to slow down the game. Uh, <laughs> You've got it all figured out. Let, let me yeah. tell you, I got to ask you before we wrap it up because I, I alluded to her and I hate to single anybody out, but because she's from Brazil and because she's having a phenomenal season and because I've seen such a transition from Maria Andrade from year one where she would have a lot of errors to now where she is just fully confident, 
What have you seen from her? And do you talk to her a lot in Portuguese? <laughs> yeah, I talk a lot. Talk a lot. Maria, it's, uh, it's very funny because I play in her town, where she comes from. Wow. I play professional there, and we won the, the, the national uh, championship for this team from her town. So I, I saw her when she was a young child. <laughs> she was given like awards for us. I didn't know that. It's really cool because she showed me the picture. She gave an award for me. She have a picture with me when she was like 14, I 15 years old. I didn't know that, wow. Yeah, it's a really fun thing, fun fact. And she came to the games and she was already uh, a good player at that moment there. They have like a school that they, they make sports for, for young kids. And when they come here and they, she say, hey, I'm from Taubaté, Taubaté is the city. And say, yeah, it's, I, I live in two years. I played two seasons there. And say, I went there to see the games. She was helping with the balls during the game. So she was, she was very close to me at that time, but I didn't know that the life brings us from the same place. So this is, gives us a lot of connection. And she was very open to learn, to, 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 to hear what I have to say for her, technical, uh, tec technically, but also for the mindset. Uh, I think all the players, they, 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 they want to hear what I have to say. Mm. Um, this is really cool um, as a coach because I think the hardest part coaching is make people understand that it's going to be better for them and make them execute that during the, the practice, the games. And I'm very happy that she's she coming out for a hard season. You know, it's not easy. She comes from, from another country. She's along here, right. different culture. I, I, I experienced these 10 years of my life living in Japan, all over Russia. So for me, it was really easy to adapt to a different country. But for her, it was, she was struggle. And I think I have a, a this, this big role, like, to, like a, a big brother. No, not say no, that, no, like a big brother nice. to, no, to hey. help her to, to, to figure out everything. That's fantastic. She was the player of the week in the conference not too long ago, got on the honor roll this week as the Bulls have won their last four series, our last two series, four matches in sweeps. And because of that, they're in first place. And if they win one time against Florida Atlantic, they will clinch first place in the East. So as we wrap it up with that, can you sort of explain how the team feels about it? Are they? confident I'm guessing they're probably confident and expecting yeah. just to keep going what we have going yeah I saw a lot of growth from all the girls um, we talk about Maria but I can say for everyone mm. um, they really working hard to get better they really embrace the battle the, the aggressive attitude I saw Marta growing so much Busse, our middles Nikki she was injury now she's helping the team Tizzy that she had to move from different positions. She was a right side, now she's playing middle, and she's still able to help the team. Uh, Caroline, that she came, was a transfer. She's Setter, doing a fantastic. really great job. Uh, our libero, Maya, that we started with Leah, and then Maya, she got injury. We play with Maya, two freshmen, yeah. and we have these freshmen, they, a lot of pressure on them. It's libero all there all the time, and people can go for her in the uh, they, uh, sometimes they struggle, sometimes they're coming out with a really great moments, and that's the team. We should help, everyone is helping each other to, to be, they, they, I think they got the, the taste of the victory, the taste of to play good. I think it's making me really happy when they come from there, you know, they, they now enjoy the battle, they now enjoy it to, to be good. So I think we are ready, you know, um, we don't have any pressure because, you know, everything is building daily basis. I think we feel this position is because what we did in the past, so that we are in this position to, to, to fight for, 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 for this win, this mm -hmm. big win after 21 years. And I hope they enjoy it, you know, they have fun and they, they, they don't need to do more than they are doing now, just do in the best way. Well, if they're enjoying it half as much as I enjoy watching you guys, uh, they're enjoying it, trust me. Thank you so much, Visoto. Best of luck against FAU and bring home that division title. Thank you. We'll Thank wrap you. up Bulls, Bullseye when we come back. So that was a lot, a lot of good stuff and a lot of height from Coach Visoto. We really are pulling for the volleyball team. And of course, Friday night football as well. It is going to be a late one on our radio side. I'm really looking forward to signing off at around 2 a.m. But if it's a victory, we'll be happy about it playing in a dome. Actually, I think I was in the Alamo Dome, in a dome more recently than any of you. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, women's basketball played in the Alamo Dome in the mm. 21 uh, NCAA tournament. Not exactly made for basketball because mm -hmm. they like put a curtain 
halfway through the arena <laughs> and it was very cavernous and I was sitting in the, f long story. Uh, but uh, what's your experience playing in Dome, sir? Professionally and, and or college? Yeah, I've been in uh, quite a few. I uh, started out my, with Syracuse. So I've been in Syracuse's Dome. Uh, played for the Houston Texans, that, that's in the Dome. Okay. Indianapolis Colts. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but I, I will say uh, the Alamo Dome is pretty cool. Um, I understand that it was built to be an NFL stadium at one point in time, which mm. never really, you know, came to fruition. But um, I played in the AAF, the Alliance of American Football League. Yeah. And that's the league that allowed us to play uh, in the Alamo Dome. And uh, it was it was pretty cool. Um, I love the turf. You know, I, re I remember the big jumbotrons. Um, and one thing about a dome, the ball flies. I don't know if the air is different. Uh, just because it's enclosed, but if you throw a football, it, it's spinning, it'll go a long way. Okay. Wow. That's a good wow. little nugget there. Byron yeah. Brown, if you're listening, get ready to uh, <laughs> spin the ball a long way. Just uh, only 90 yard out routes. Um, <laughs> but actually, not. So you definitely have been in the dome more recently than I have. Uh, mm -hmm. I was actually there calling arena football with the Tampa Bay Storm playing okay. the San Antonio, mm -hmm. whatever they were. And again, it was cut in half. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward for the Bulls having the experience of a full, full field. Alamo <laughs> Dome. And this team, UTSA, will will pack the crowd pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, Got to say, Tramel Logan, I didn't want to bring it up because he probably hears it every time he, he has an interview. His hair is phenomenal. Killing it. Would you agree? Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of people on, on the team, actually, that That's have true. some good hair. That's I actually true. talked to Gunner after practice the other day. Mm -hmm. He... His whole his method to his madness, he doesn't wash. He rinses and washes maybe like once a week. Oh, man. I know. Okay. He, like, he goes Wait. with the grease. Like he said it's healthy. The grease uh -huh. is healthy. But he does do <laughs> a rinse. Probably got a healthy smell to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He does do the him. rinse, though. So that, I hope you were healthy. talking to him post-wash and not post-rinse. He's rinse. really proud of his hair, too. Gunnar Greenwald, yeah. you yeah. should be proud of your hair. Yeah. Hey, guys, are you going to be okay next week? I'm going to be in the Virgin Islands. I know, deep regrets. I'm going to be in the Virgin <laughs> Islands with women's basketball, so I won't be able to be part of the show. Oh, We're going to miss you. We're going to miss you. I'm already planning to be sad. <laughs> so it'll be Kaylee, it'll be BJ, and they're going to hold it down. I think we're going to talk to one of the seniors. I think Donna, Donovan Jennings is going to be part mm. of the program next week, and we'll Can't be looking wait. forward to the end of the regular season and not the end of the season, though, for the Bulls. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching Bullseye. For Kaylee and BJ, I'm Derek Sharp. Horn up.